Johnny Harris is a bit of a controversial person. On one hand, he creates these beautifully designed and shot videos that tell compelling, fascinating stories across a whole range of different topics. On the other hand, he's been called out a number of times by experts in their respective fields for getting certain facts incorrect or not representing them with sufficient context. Well, recently, Johnny posted a video on the supplement industry, and he breaks it up into different chapters, including policy, uh, effectiveness of supplements, and violations of supplement companies. Now, I have no expertise in the policy part, nor the history or anything else related to that, except I am able to dissect studies. And it just so happens that Johnny mentions a study that is the backbone of most of his uh, science chapter. So... Does this video with millions of views represent the science accurately? Let's see. To be clear, I'm focusing on a piece of the video, and the video is 30 minutes long. So please be aware and check out the full video, which is linked, if you want the full context. However, the piece that I'll be dissecting represents the section on science and this study. One of my questions going into all of this is like, what of this is legit? Is any of it, or is it all just snake oil? What does the science actually say? There's been a lot of good study on this, and luckily, we got one of those amazing things where they do a study of all of the studies, and they put it all together, and they say, this is what all the studies have concluded over the years. Like a good old meta-analysis. This meta-analysis, which used 84 studies and put it all together to find conclusions, found that vitamins and supplements were generally, quote, associated with little or no benefit in preventing cancer, cardiovascular disease, and death. Had a little bit of a benefit on treating cancer if you already have it. They also found that people with a high risk of lung cancer had an, quote, increased risk of lung cancer and other harmful outcomes by taking one vitamin, beta carotene. So what this basically is saying is that vitamins don't work for like the big things, preventing the killers like cancer and heart problems, and they maybe even hurt us in some cases, depending on the supplement. But in reading these conclusions, you start to realize just how complex this is. There are like thousands of different supplements and there are like innumerable numbers of individual bodies that have different chemistry and different experiences. Okay, so if you've been with Physionic for a time, you know how much I'm not a fan of highlighting a sentence in a study and claiming that as gospel. But I don't fault Johnny because it's also not his domain. So what choice does he really have? Fortunately, this is where we can offer much more information. So he shows the meta-analysis that he mentioned on screen which is this study. The researchers of this study, this meta-analysis, wanted to answer four key questions, including wanting to know the effect of multivitamins on cardiovascular disease, cancer, and overall mortality, as well as harms of multivitamins, and the effects and harms of single nutrients, as opposed to looking at multivitamins. Pretty extensive, but Although they included 84 studies, most of which were randomized controlled trials, which sounds great, some of the data was pretty uh, lackluster. We'll get into why in just a bit. Okay, the first claim by Mr. Harris based on the analysis is that vitamins have either no link to a benefit or may provide only a small benefit in preventing these three outcomes. Remember, that's cardiovascular disease, cancer, and all-cause mortality. If we crack open the study and look at the data, we can see that he's right in pointing this out. We see that the outcomes of interest are on the left, uh, the number of studies per outcome, the number of people involved in the grouping of the studies, the number of events, which is like the heart attacks for cardiovascular disease or cancer diagnosis and so on, and the odds ratio. Essentially, if the odds ratio is one, there's no improvement. If it is less than one, there is an improvement. And if it is over one, there's a detriment of multivitamin use. There's more complexity to all this, like the statistics that need to be applied, but I'll get to that. You can 
Also, just look at the boxes. If they fall on the line, then their effect is close to one or no difference. If it leans toward favoring intervention, that's in favor of multivitamin use. Okay, so just keep that in mind because we'll be looking over some more data in just a bit, and it follows the exact same rules. It seems at first glance that multivitamins may provide a small benefit on all of these outcomes because all the odds ratios are less than 1.0. However, if we consider what is known as a confidence interval, the statistics, and the fact that the cardiovascular disease criteria only included one study, the evidence doesn't look quite as convincing. When considering all of these other factors, it turns out that only cancer outcomes were improved by multivitamin use, and even then, the effect was very small. So, on the multivitamin front, it does seem that the effects are extremely weak. I'll have more to say on this in just a bit, because there are some additional considerations. But this data does provide some comfort in also showing us that multivitamins are at least not causing us harm. Okay. But what happens when we dose a single vitamin as opposed to multivitamins? Well, focusing in on one measure, beta carotene, which is converted to retinol, vitamin A, in our body, again, if we look at this data, including seven studies this time, but only looking at all-cause mortality, there does seem to be a slightly increased risk. Again, something that was outlined by Johnny and the researchers. Okay, so... So far, so good. Highlighted sentences seem to be corroborated by the evidence at hand. Believe it or not, sometimes that actually isn't the case. That's why it's important to actually look at the data. But I did mention that there were a few gripes that I had, and those don't come from looking at the data, but going a few layers deeper. A few things are not evident, even if you were to read the entire study, because they're found in the supplemental material that comes with the main study. One thing that should be pointed out is that all the people included in this uh, series of studies were mostly healthy. There are a few exceptions, but I'll get to those in just a minute. So the studies were performed on people that specifically did not have nutritional deficiencies. Now, think about that. If we see an improvement in cancer outcomes, meaning that people are protected from developing cancer with multivitamin use, that's not all that shabby considering that these people are already in a nutritionally competent state. It would mean that there is an additional benefit to supplementation, albeit small. That also doesn't condemn multivitamins in other outcomes because, well, there was no effect. It just might mean that nutritionally intact individuals don't receive additional benefit like they do with cancer. As for beta carotene, there were several studies included that were in high risk populations, specifically people at high risk of lung cancer, like those with asbestos exposure or smokers. So would this necessarily be representative of the average person? We literally can't say because the average person's data is mixed in with the high risk data, which muddies the water. So, for that, we would need a subgroup analysis, which the researchers did not perform. Either way, though, beta-carotene supplementation alone may be a slightly detrimental, even if the nuances aren't exactly clear here. They did specifically mention that there was an increased risk of lung cancer over 3.7 to 12 years of supplementation. Again, that may be driven by those who smoked or had high risk of exposure. We really don't know. Okay, two more things to say before we wrap this up and offer some final words. Also, if you're interested in having an analysis on vitamin D on cancer, mortality, and a few other metrics, along with vitamin E, calcium, and others, I have a research review that I released for the Physionic Insiders. You can find that link in the description. I would really love to have you aboard. But the final two aspects to consider are the length of the studies, and what the studies are being compared against. The analysis had a limit of at least one year study duration, but that may not be long enough to tease out some differences when discussing more progressive diseases like heart disease and cancer. However, I looked over all of the studies and most of them lasted at least four years or longer. And even if that's still a relatively short time, it might be long enough. The other consideration is when we look at the control here, uh, we need to know 
what these vitamins are being stacked up against. Is it uranium or is it something more understandable? Again, here the researchers were comparing it against placebo. In other scenarios, one could argue that dietary or exercise intervention would be an unfair comparison. And that would be a good point because when we would be looking at the negative results of the vitamins, when in reality, the results are being driven by the positive results of the control, but that isn't the case here. So the comparisons here are clean. Okay, where does that leave us? Two thoughts. One, I have to largely agree with Johnny and the researchers. Supplementation with vitamins at recommended daily intakes does not seem to have any noticeable effects on cardiovascular disease, cancer, or overall mortality. With a tiny nod in favor of multivitamins for cancer and a tiny frown against beta carotene in the same metric. But I wonder if this is also only true for people with normal levels of all these vitamins in their system already. The results may look vastly different in people who are deficient. And Johnny mentions as much to his credit. Another consideration is if people even take supplements to fend off these conditions. Of course, you know, preventing heart disease and cancer are critical to longer life. But it doesn't mean that there aren't other metrics for which people consume supplements oftentimes non-vitamin supplements, like for cognition, uh, energy, dementia prevention, allergy relief, and much, much more. So this doesn't seem like a damnation of supplements to me. Additionally, the dose matters because there are instances where higher doses offer benefits not experienced with lower doses. Still, it is a reminder that not everything is better the more that we have, AKA beta carotene. And, if you have a healthy diet, extra vitamin supplements may be, I don't know, a 95% waste of your money, which is probably not news to you. So overall, while I think there's a lot more to consider than what's outlined in this video, I think that this meta-analysis and Johnny's interpretation are pretty accurate here. And on that note, can I entice you to check out this other video wherein I dissect another person's scientific claims? Check it out, bye.